Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug, and it's a good, good day, uh, and hope you're having a good one, and it's my joy to visit with you again. For my devotional thought today, uh, in Sunday School right now, we're studying Andy Stanley's book, um, Better Decisions, Fewer Regrets. I commend it to you for your reading. It's, it's a pretty easy read, and, and it's very practical and, and helpful. This past Sunday, uh, we looked at the legacy question, uh, which says, what story do you want to tell? What, what do you want your legacy to be? What, what story it is that, that you want to be telling about your life? But the story we want to tell may not necessarily be the story we're writing. For our story is made up of made up by dis every decision we make. It's kind of like putting a puzzle together piece by piece. Every decision has an outcome, a consequence, and a result. So I ask you and reflect and want to reflect with you, what story do we want to tell? What story do you want to tell the person you're dating? Or the one that might just be the one? What story do you want to tell your children? Your grandchildren? And I don't know, maybe it's my age, but as I was thinking about this, how many times have my decisions ended up in regrets? Things that I wish I could edit, edit out of my story, but it's too late for that. And it got me thinking, and they weren't really very good thoughts, but they were honest. How many times have I been short with D when I was tired or frustrated? She certainly hadn't done anything, and yet those words slipped out, and another chapter was written. How many times did I look at things through my eyes, relied on my own understanding and experience, and simply fast failed to ask God for direction? More regrets. How many times did I fail to take time for my parents and sadly tell a tale of woe of just how busy things were in the parish? Oh, now I only wish I could have one more visit with them. How many times have we missed a child's game, recital, concert, or play because our priorities were out of order? How many times did we miss having the story to tell of our child's victories rather than seeing the disappointment on their faces? And this last one, how many times have we spoken harshly or hurtfully hurting the feelings of family and friends? How many scars were created? And how many times did we have to apologize for another ill-advised flurry of words? Just more regrets. Well, in this Sunday sermon, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 13. Many folks refer to it as the love chapter. And in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7, we read these words. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not prate itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. My friends, let these words be a reminder to us what love should look like. They are words that can guide our decisions and help us to make better decisions with fewer regrets. These are words that will allow us to write a story that we can happily share with family and friends. These are words that will help us have living stories that don't require editing or apologies. These are words that will help us write a story sh that shows we are Christ followers in both speech and action. And so today, I just want to ask us to simply revolve, resolve one thing, to put Paul's writing about love into action, to live out these qualities of love in our lives. Because if we'll do that, then we'll make better decisions with fewer regrets. Amen. Well, my friends, there's some really uh, important things that I need to share with you today. Um, it 
it is good to see activity uh, in church, community, and the schools uh, all kind of gearing back up as we approach the fall. Uh, our Sunday service will include blessings of the backpack. Um, children and youth are encouraged to bring their backpacks for this special time. And we want to be prayerful because Susquehanna classes resume uh, on Monday then. Nine Methodist women will be meeting in person on Tuesday, August the 24th at 6.30 in the Fellowship Hall. All women 18 and over are invited to come out. Please see the, the bulletin announcement for further details. Men's Breakfast, a, a wonderful time of fellowship for the men of our community, is resuming uh, on the last Tuesday of, of the month uh, at 9 o'clock. Their next breakfast is scheduled for August 31st. Wesley is, being, is offering a fall Bible study entitled Invitation to John. This will be an 11-week study and will be offered via Zoom format, uh, hopefully starting September 12th or 14th. At present, we're considering a Sunday or Tuesday evening uh, for the meeting, and folks that are interested and participated are asked to contact Jeff Miller by the end of the month. Again, you can see the bulletin for additional details. And finally, Bishop Park uh, issued a letter on August 12th uh, of this year. Uh, the church council reviewed that letter and affirmed the bishop's rec recommendations to ensure the safety of everyone for maintaining in-person gatherings. Because of the increase in COVID cases and the severity of the Delta variant, the bishop rec has recommended the following, and we will abide by these. First, Members are strongly encouraged to wear masks at all indoor gatherings, to practice social distancing, urge to get vaccinated if eligible, and for the most vulnerable or those not feeling well to worship with us online. You can read the entire letter on the conference website, www.susumc.org. My friends, it's been good to get together again today and um, Let's close our time with a word of prayer. Will you pray with me? Loving and forgiving God, I know that I need to be more thoughtful and disciplined about the decisions I make as I write my story. Help me to be more loving, more gracious, more merciful, just as you have been to me. Help me make better decisions with fewer regrets. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for visiting, my friends. We'll talk again soon. May the peace of God be with you. Please stay strong and stay safe.